Charlie Darling, Eugene here. Hope you're all well. It's been a while, almost a month, I'd say, but just been, you know, doing my thing. But I do have for you today, since it's iris season, springtime, and it's been raining a whole lot here in Toronto. Like, I think it rained every day last week, you know, with the exception of a day or two here and there. It's rained all day today. It's going to rain all day tomorrow and Wednesday and yada, yada, yada. I've got for you my top five favorite iris perfumes. I can't say they will forever be my top five because our tastes are always changing ever so slightly. And that's really why I don't like to partake in those four fragrances for life. 10 niche for life videos because I think they're absolutely ridiculous. My tastes are always changing. When I uh, first got interested in perfume, I loved, 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 loved Rose. And then, you know, as time passed, I kind of shifted over to Jasmine. I was huge in the Jasmine. And right now I'm just like totally madly in love with Iris and all its um, nuances and the chords. And that's probably why I love Guerlain and Chanel so much is just because they incorporate all three of these florals into their perfumes. But not only that, but I've got a very special unboxing for you. Um, the mythical, the legendary Iris Ganoche, which I've been hanging on to this for about three weeks now. It's been sitting in my cold cellar, just waiting for the perfect time, the moment. Um, just really wanted to be ready, but um, here we are. <laughs> Iris Ganoche. I've never smelled Iris Ganoche, believe it or not, um, being the uh, Guerlain fanboy that I am. And I've heard so much about it, and um, we'll see how does it stack up to uh, some of my favorites. So I've got, I don't, I've actually got seven Iris base perfumes two are really the same just uh rebranding but and i won't put these in order but here's iris pudra in the limited edition frederick mull bottle with these stickers the bottle looked a lot cooler um in pictures when i first saw it but it's not too bad these things are just like colored plastic um thingies that seem to be made, or they feel like they were made by uh, my child's grade two class during arts and crafts session that were just kind of glued onto a Frederick Mull bottle. But this is Iris Pudra um, uh, by Pierre Bourdain, Bourdon. <laughs> I almost said Anthony Bourdain. Uh, Pierre Bourdon, Bourdon, sorry. And uh, what this reminds me of really is a little bit of number five. So I can just imagine when, when Bourdon and um, Frederick Mull got together, they're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to make here? So let's make an iris based perfume. Okay, so let's take number five and, and jazz it up. You know, we'll, 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 we'll make it this grand number five. I love number five, but I don't really think it's a... To me, it's more of a cozy scent than it is something really grand and 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 big. And when I smell uh, Iris Pudra, it's 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 said to be known as um, this Hollywood glamour perfume, and I can totally see that. I can see Nicole Kidman or Jackie Kennedy wearing this you know in the, in their ball gown to the grand ball just working the the lobby and you know doing their thing i can totally see that it's very floral it's very very feminine um the first few times i wore it i was like whoa this is this is a little bit too much and um i kind of had to to lower the sprays just to tame it down but um at first i didn't really notice the iris it's a couple wearings and the iris doesn't really break through till the dry down. Um, in the opening, it's very, very floral. You get uh, uh, white florals. They're a little bit musky. I can pick up some jasmine, some rose, some ylang, um, very creamy sandalwood, some incense. And I thought, man, there's no iris in here. I don't. At least I don't pick it up. 
for something called Iris Pudra, I had a hard time at first picking this up. But the Iris does break through in the dry down and it's just this really um, white powdery Iris with a whole lot of incense is what I get from it mainly. Um, Iris Pudra, love it, love it, love it, love it. Iris Pudra. Here is Leur's Cartier number one, Promise, which is very similar to a lot of the irises I have. And this is a dry, a vegetal iris, similar to La Pausa, not unsimilar to Hides. A very musky. It's just really dry and vegetal, I find it. Um, I do like it, but you know me. I, I did say this was going to be my five favorite, but knowing me, I had to throw a couple in there that um, might not necessarily be my favorite, but I like as well. And this is one I think I could have done without Promise. It doesn't smell as natural to me as some of the higher... It's, 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 it's hard to say that there are some that are higher up, but I mean, the Cartier Le Ourdes are really high quality, um, classy, well-made, but I feel it kind of lacks in um, the craftsmanship department and it hurts. It hurts for me to say that, but that's how I feel. Now we got three Hermes, but before I go on, I just want to say there are a ton of iris based perfumes out there that I have not smelled that I'm really, really interested in. Uh, one is Mask Milano's La Tessa. And uh, if you guys have any feedback for me, I'd love to hear. Um, I, I've seen some of the reviews and, and, and the written reviews, and I feel like they're kind of perfumes that were sent for, you know, for review. So I, I'm not really sure how I feel taking that, but um, speaking to people that have actually gone and bought samples or bottles, you know, I've kind of hearing different, different stories or, or different perceptions, if you will. So I'm not really sure what to think. The uh, La Tessa was one that I was interested in. There's the other one, Atelier Doors, um, Iris Fauve is another one that really has me interested. I've been hearing a lot of good things about that. The one they um, really gorgeous bottles, packaging with the gold flakes inside, which might be gimmicky, but um, you know if the perfume's good, I'm okay with the uh, the gimmicks that go along with it. But here I've got three Hermes. Two are from the Hermesence, and this is Iris Yukoi, which. Um, is a little bit too floral for me with a huge dosage of uh, sour, citrusy grapefruit that really clashes with my skin chemistry. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, uh, Hermes is a huge love of mine and Jean-Claude Elena is one of my favorite perfumes, but somehow this does not sit well on my skin. Um, and for something named Iris Yukoi, I, I find it difficult to pick up Iris. I get mostly white, musky florals that sour on my skin. And I feel like, um, my grandma in church, if you know what I mean, it just kind of smells sweaty to me. Um, that's just how I feel. <laughs> I don't know how better to describe it, but from the same collection is a perfume named Paprika Brazil, which to me is mainly iris and the type of iris that I love. This is a dry, woody, spicy iris. Oh my God. It is extremely dry. One of the driest fragrances I have ever worn. And when I wear it, I find myself doing this. I, I, I get, I don't know. My mouth gets pasty. I want to drink water. Um, paprika. So 
I am almost getting wet green bell pepper from this very watery, like a washed uh, bell pepper that was chopped up and placed right under your nose. And I'm also getting um, a contrasting dry red paprika powder. And that's where really that, that pastiness is coming from. Also a very spicy pimento. Jean-Claude Elena wanted to recreate the, um, the burn, you know, the burn of the pimento pepper on the tongue. He wanted to recreate that into a smell, a perfume. Um, I do get a lot of spices from this and a lot of wood in the dry down. And this is one that I, I, I much prefer over Iris Yukoi. I don't know how this has happened, but I think they were really, um, name like the naming here something happened i don't know they, they should have trade names somehow but iris yukoi should have they just been named like floral yukoi i'm not sure they, they should have done something different but if uh you love uh Hermes and you don't want to spend the money i think one that i appreciate a little bit more is the cheapest one from their from their heritage line or their i'm not sure what this line is called right now it just it just, it's left me, but um, this is one of my favorites. A very also dry, warm, um, I get colors. I see like an off-white, creamy, neutral color. Uh, I get that carroty top. So it kind of has that carrot accord, vegetal, little bit of greenness. It's just so just really dry and earthy. And I love to wear this when it, I love to wear all these really when it's raining. It's my favorite time to wear them. When it's raining, I find rain is very therapeutic for me. It's, uh, it's almost moody like, like it, it just puts you in that trance where you kind of want to be left alone. You're standoffish and um, just get lost in your own thoughts. And that's kind of how I feel when it's raining and, 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 and when I'm wearing iris. And this is one of my favorites, and especially at bedtime. It's just really relaxing. So I can wear it during the day, but I much prefer it in the evening um, right before bed. It's calming and soothing and relaxing. Next, okay, so we've got three Chanel's here. I'm sure you can all guess what they are. And it's probably a cardinal sin for me to say, uh, my favorite iteration of 19 is Poudre. I know um, I should be telling you it's not, it's the EDT or the EDP, but this is my favorite for the sole reason that it's the one I love to wear the most. Um, there's nothing wrong with the EDT, there's nothing wrong with the EDT, but I love the nuances of poudre. Um, I love powder. I find this more green, more wet than the EDT and the EDP, which are more dry. The iris stands out for me a little bit more on this. And uh, I get that green grassy vetiver. I get leathery notes. And this, to me, it just, just pops on my skin. And uh, the skin chemistry is better for me than the, both the EDP and the EDT. Oh God, it's just so creamy and, and bubbly and it's just warm and uh, I don't know, I just love the way it wears. Also, I love wearing this at bedtime, you know, like just to come home from work and have a shower and relax after dinner, spray a little bit of this on, um, stays close to the skin, it doesn't really bother anybody else and you know, it's loud enough for me to enjoy it. So here we've got, these are the last two, and I've got um, both concentrations of La Pausa. This is EDP, EDT, and you know, a lot's been made, a lot's been said about the EDP concentrations. And this is the one that I was most desperate to get a bottle of the EDT 
you know, when the concentration concentrations have changed. And I was lucky to find one on eBay. And this to me is the biggest change out of all the uh, Liz exclusives because these two are, are basically, they're different perfumes. They're, they don't smell anything alike to me. Yeah, they're both iris based, but um, very, very different. And there's times, you know, I wear them and I'm like, okay, which one am I wearing? Because I almost seem like they do kind of dry down similarly, but the openings are just so very, very different. And they're just so both very, very gorgeous. But I do prefer 28 um, just a little bit more. I think it's more, the opening is more about Iris. Oh God, it's just so hauntingly one of the most beautiful perfumes I've ever smelled. And for a long, 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 long time, I was one of those that believed La Pausa, you know, disappears on skin, it's gone, it's a skin scent after two or three hours, but no, um, I, I can pick this up eight, 10 hours, you know, into my day after wearing it, especially if it's um, raining and humid outside, this will come alive on your skin. So to me, it's very green, it's dry, it's rooty, it's vegetal. I Again, I see that, that neutral cream color. Um, I don't see green, I don't see the color purple, like I, um, the iris is colored purple. To me, I, I see mostly a neutral cream color. Um, they both kind of have this leathery accord. The, the EDP is a little bit more suede, less leather, more suede. It's more soft. Um, they both kind of have this green, dry, crisp vetiver note. And uh, I can definitely notice La Pausa running through a lot of the other exclusives, especially Queer de Russi and um, Sycamore. That's what it is. So this was my scent of the day today. Love, 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 love La Pausa. It's like... It's just out of this world. I don't know what it is. Uh, the leather really comes out in the dry down. Um, get a little bit of incense, that crisp, dry, green, rooty, earthy vetiver. It's just um, soft, uh, creamy, mushroomy. You know, that, that mushroomy iris that Ch Chanel does so well. You can pick that up in a lot of the Chanel's, even in the designer line. I get that that mushroomy fungal iris. I don't know how else to explain it, but that, but it's just, you know, brilliant La Pausa. And now we're gonna together smell um, Iris Ganoche for the first time. All right, so this is extremely exclusive and only available in one of the Paris boutiques. And I got this from, I gotta, I gotta thank Gladys, one of my viewers for hooking me up with uh, a contact that goes in and out of Paris. And she's kind of like a Paris shopper and picks things up for clients. And that's, I think that's her job or her source of income. But I did get this from a Paris shopper and she sent some Kit Kats. The kids will enjoy those. A couple of Kit Kats, thank you. So I'm really curious here. Um, I've got friends that are known. Oh, this is really gorgeously packed. It's got the ribbon. Uh, the Guerlain ribbon, the Guerlain stamp. Um, that have been hyping Iris Ganoche, you know, as one of the greatest Iris-based perfumes. And, you know, sometimes I get that feeling, you know, would it be as hyped as if it wasn't as exclusive, if it wasn't as hard to get, if it wasn't discontinued. And um, I don't know, I just... As much as I love the arts and materials, I, I I don't get that emotion from them that I get from the Chanel exclusives that I get from the Hermes Salons, you know. I like them and I enjoy them and I wear them, but 
I'm not in love with them, if that makes any sense. You know, they're just not, I'm not emotionally attached to them. So these do are there, they're filled from a fountain and all the bottles are, um, you know, you can go and pick your bottle, you can pick your color, you can pick your ribbon, you can pick the color of your ribbon. So each bottle is unique to the purchaser and I've gone with an all purple bottle. You can see here. So we've probably got some, the colorful B bottles. We won't get into all that, but here is Iris Ganoche in the all purple bottle. Um, they did offer engraving, but the boutique that I got well, that this was available at only had um, the machine engraving and I didn't really like it. So I preferred the hand engraving. You can kind of change the, uh, the sizes and the style. So I went with the purple Guerlain sticker. So here we go. We're going to spray this. We're going to wear this. I'm not going to dab. I am the anti-dabber. Um, dabbing doesn't exist for me. I, I can't stand dabbing. So I've got some vials here. I've got a little funnel that Guerlain gave me. And we're just going to fill this up. Oops. Damn it. Oh, great. <laughs> I had some friends recently post something somewhere about not being able to stand unboxing videos. And I was like, oh, fuck, too bad. Like, we're going to unbox this. I know a lot of my viewers um, love Guerlain just as I, as much as I do. And I, I'm, I'm, I love unboxing videos and I'm more than happy to share this with you guys. So I'm just going to be really careful here. As this stuff is like extremely precious. That's about enough. I'm just going to close that up. So I can't smell anything yet. And I'm really curious, knowing Terry Wasser knowing his sweet tooth i have a feeling this is going to be really sweet i have a feeling i'm not sure how much iris this is going to contain i'm starting to smell a little bit gone on my fingers here goes i like to spray it in the air Uh, initial impression, I can see a lot of insolence in here. Um, and that was oddly done by uh, Maurice Roussel for Guerlain. And off the bat, it's very floral. It's sweet. It's sugary, woody. Yeah, you know, it does remind me of a lot of the arts and materials that that vanillic dry woods, sweetness. Uh, I think I get some violet in here as well. And I can't, I think I get more violet than iris, but I, a violet is, is, is a note that's usually um, played alongside with iris. But it's definitely got Theory's signature musks, incense, woods. Like this is very familiar to me. Um, and it's not, you know, this is totally something that I was expecting for it to be. It's not really dry. I don't get any vegetalness or greenness or rootiness. To me, it's all I see, you know, I see this color, the, the purple color, and I see violets, um, sweet woods, almost, you know, not unlike, um, um, De La Marie, what's it called? The Wedding Day Scent, you know, it, it's that Tonka Imperial Arts and Materials uh, It's it's definitely not the mythic, the um, you know, the 
it's not as great as it's been made out to be. I can tell you that right, you know, right from first sniff. The way, you know, the way people put this as, oh my God, Iris Ganoche, oh my God, the greatest thing ever in existence. No, it's definitely, um, it's definitely familiar. I can tell you that. If you're a fan of the arts and materials, you're going to like this, but it's, it, it doesn't hold, you know, with, it doesn't hold with La Pausa. It doesn't hold with Edis. Um, it's, it's just, you know, it's not the greatest Iris. I can tell you that it's actually, I can't, I'm having a hard time even picking up Iris in here, but it might all change if I wear it properly. Anyway, let me know if you've smelt uh, Iris Ganoche, what you think of it. Also, let me know your top three or if you want your top five Iris perfumes. I'm always looking for uh, more Iris f uh, favorites. I, I heard about La Labo's Iris. I'm, I'm, I can't rem ever remember smelling it, um, but I hear good things about that. It's, it's among, you know, along the lines of the things that I do appreciate. Um, there's the other ones, La Tessa and Iris Fauve. And if there's anything else that you want to recommend, please do so in the comments. Otherwise, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank the Whack Pack, you know, for messaging me and, and commenting and, and all that other mumbo jumbo stuff. Anyway, guys, we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.